welcome to this course on services marketing and today we will talk about module 10. This module 9, 10 and 11 they forms the part of developing a service product. So, we are we are now dealing with the second uh, section that is how to go about applying 4 P's of marketing to services. In module 9 we have talked about uh, the, uh, the core services, the supplementary services and the delivery processes. Now, let us look at uh, the module 10. In module 10 we will try to understand branding at the corporate and individual service product levels. So, there are two levels at which we will be talking about branding. So, one is the corporate level and at the individual service product level. Next is we will examine how service firms use different branding strategies. Understand how branding can be used to tier service product and discuss how firms can build brand equity. Understand what is required to deliver branded service experience. So, we will talk about the branding at the corporate and individual level then how do service firms they, uh, they use different branding strategies, understand how, how branding can be used to tier service products, discuss how firms can build brand equity. So, the, the first three points pertain to building a brand and the fourth point uh, relates to brand equity, how to, how to go about building brand equity and then we will understand how to deliver this whole of branded service experience. Then we will list the categories of new service development ranging from simple style changes to major innovations. So, there are a, a, a whole spectrum of new services that can be developed. On the one hand, we have a plain simple style change. On the other hand, you have radical changes, major innovations. Then we will describe how firms can achieve success in new service development. Now, look at the branding of service firms, their products and experiences. Branding helps marketers to establish a mental picture of the services in the customer's mind and to clarify the nature of the value proposition. So, the brands lie in the mind of consumers as do positioning. Brands they help marketers to establish a mental picture. So, the picture is only mental there is no real picture of the services of their services in the mind of the consumers and then it also clarifies the nature of the value proposition. Distinctive brand names of individual service products, they enable the firms to communicate the distinctive experiences and benefits associated with a specific service concept to the target markets. So, the idea of having those distinctive brand names for different service products is to communicate the distinctive experiences and benefits that comes with the different different uh, specific services and this is how the customers will experience the service. Let us look at the example of Banyan Tree Hotels and Resorts. It has carefully cra crafted specified products for its various target segments branded as Heavenly Honeymoon, Spa Indulgence or Intimate Moments for couples celebrating their wedding anniversaries. So, now you see that how carefully they have crafted their specific products for different kind of target segments. Service organizations offer a line of product rather than just a single product. So, there we are talking of a line of products not one product. So, there are four broad branding alternatives starting from branded house to house of brand and then there are the sub brands and endorsed brands. So, uh, we will talk about the difference between all these. So, look at this spectrum. On the left hand side, we have started with corporate branding and we then move on to individual product branding. So, here it is corporate level branding, the branding of a corporate, a company and then here individual products are being branded. For example, you have a branded house that is Virgin Group. So, there are lots of uh, companies under this umbrella and each comes with the name of Virgin. So, this is a corporate branding and this is branded house. On the extreme right, there are individual product branding. So, every individual product is branded which is called as house of brands. So, there are Yum brands and then for example, you have all those ITCs and HULs and PNGs. So, they have those 
individual products brand and in between there are several options available one is sub brands raffle class at singapore airlines so there are sub brands there, uh, that can be for example if we take example if if i if i can use example from products for uh, we can have the dove and lux so dove has a variety of uh, uh, products under its brand then lux has another variety of products under under its uh, under its brand then there are endorsed brand starwood hotel and resort so these are the two extremes and in between these two of the two extremes there are these broad four alternatives although there can be some more alternatives in between these two extremes but for uh, for our purpose these four are uh, good enough branded house means it can be used to describe a company that applies its brand name to multiple offerings in often unrelated fields for example the virgin group it applies its brand name to multiple offerings and these offerings they come from a variety of uh, fields and these fields are unrelated their core business is travel entertainment and lifestyle but it also offers financial services healthcare media and telecom so now you see that their core business is into travel entertainment and lifestyle but there are several other services that they also offer that, uh, that may include financial services healthcare media and telecom services so they have unrelated uh, services the merits of this is that the brand brand gets overstretched and weakened so now you there is no no advantage of one kind one kind of services uh, to another kind of service so one brand of services is not helping another brand of services so uh, the brand gets gets overstretched and when you overstretch something it becomes weak another option can be sub brands the corporate or the master brand is the main reference point but the product itself has a distinctive name for example singapore airlines singapore poor singapore airlines raffle class denoting the company's business class and then singapore airlines suit is beyond first class service on the a380 so within the same aircraft also they are branding the business class and uh, business class separately so that that is an example of sub brand the third uh, types of type of branding strategy can be endorsed brand the product brand dominates but the corporate name is still featured for example intercontinental hotel group is itself a well known group but its product brands are dominant look at this extreme left we are talking of intercontinental hotel and resorts then there are holiday in resorts and hotel indigo it uh, under this umbrella they have this intercontinental hotel uh, hot, hotels and resorts crowny plaza hotels and resorts and holiday in club vacations under this umbrella of holiday in resort they have holiday in express stay bridge suites and candlewood suites under under hotel indigo they have this holiday in even hotels and how luxury the fourth option is on the next stream is the fourth option that is house of brands the corporate brand and its well known sub brands for example yum brands inc and their their restaurant brands are different for example they have kfc pizza hut and taco bell so this is house of brands so this is the house and these are the various brands within them so yum brands they own kfc pizza hut and taco bell now also so th these are the uh, the, the pictures that uh, are shown for this so this is taco bell and this is pizza hut and this is uh, kfc now here you should also keep in mind that don't look at whether these strategies they are mutually exclusive or not so there can be overlaps in that also because in this house of brands you can you, you can call that it also has sub brands so for a multi brand strategy to succeed each brand must promise a distinctive value proposition targeted at a different customer segment so uh, in the when we have a multiple brands that is a problem because now each brand has a promise and that promise is a distinctive value proposition and this distinctive value proposition is obviously targeted to a different target segment so in order to make your multi brand strategy succeed 
each brand must promise a distinctive value proposition targeted at a different customer segment. Sometimes segmentation is also situation based. The same individual may have different needs and also willingness to pay under differing conditions and circumstances such as when traveling with family or traveling on business. So, maybe they when they are traveling, they are traveling with family that is on their out of their own pocket and when they are traveling on business, so that is on the company's account. So, they may be the willingness to pay may be different and obviously, the needs are different and therefore, the segment they, they the same person may be there in two different segments, but not obviously at the same time. A multi brand strategy is aimed at encouraging customers to continue buying from within the brand family. So, that is the that is the advantage of this uh, 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 brand families that if, uh, when they are traveling on their own, when they have when they have a tighter budget, when they are tra traveling with family, still they have a brand to choose from, from within the same family and when they are traveling on business, then also they have a brand to choose from, from within, the, within that same family. A multi brand strategy is aimed at encouraging customers to continue buy from within the brand family. So, that is why they have different types of uh, brands in the brand family, so that the customers they continue to buy from within the same family. Loyalty programs are often used to encourage this, whereby loyalty points are collected in one sub brand when on business uh, travel, but, uh, but they can then be redeemed through another brand on leisure trips. So, within the same family if you are buying then the loyalty programs can fr earned from one brand can be can be used to buy another brand. Let us look at tiering service products with branding. In a number of service industries, branding is not only used to differentiate core services, but also to clearly, clearly differentiate services levels. This is known as service tiering. So, it is not the branding is not only to differentiate the core service, but also to differentiate various service levels. It is common in industries such as hotels, airlines that example that we have seen of Air, Singapore airlines, car rentals, computer hardware and software support. Other examples of tiering includes healthcare insurance. So, you can have various types of healthcare insurance, one can be for everything, one can be just for, uh, for one particular disease or a couple of diseases. Then there are cable television, so you can buy one package that include everything or there are other packages that come at, comes at different prices and the credit cards, the, uh, this example that we have seen in module 8. Now, let us look at what happens to these tiers in these various types of industries. So, in lodging industry, the tiers include star or diamond rating and the key service attributes and physical elements that can be used in tiering are the architecture, landscaping, room size, furnishings and decor, restaurant facilities and menus, room service hours, array of services and physical amenities, staffing levels, caliber and attitude of employees. So, now the, these whole combination of the, all these variables can be used to, uh, to, to come up with various service tiers and then each tier can be then branded. Now, what happens in airlines? So, there are classes intercontinental, first class, business class, uh, premium, class premium economy and economy. So, uh, the, the key service attributes and service elements that can be used in tiering are seat pitch that is distance between the rows seat width and reclining capability, meals and beverages services, staffing ratios, check-in speed, departure and arrival launch and baggage retrieval speed. The third type of industry that we will consider is uh, car rental. So, uh, the tiers can be on the basis of various class of vehicles. So, based on vehicle size from subcompact to full size, Degree of luxury plus several vehicle types, minivan, SUV and convertible. So, these can be, uh, they can have different brands. The fourth industry that we, that uh, is chosen as an example is hardware and software support. 
so support various types of support levels can be uh, can be used as tiers and hours of service uh, hours and days of service so is it 24 by 7 service or is it available only between 10 to 5 on weekdays or working days the speed of response so once you have uh, lodged a complaint how much time it will take for uh, take the company to respond to the speed of delivery delivering replacement parts and technician delivered services versus advice on self service availability of additional services so now the, uh, this uh, this uh, table shows uh, how uh, the various tiers uh, tiers can be used in various industries for coming up with different kind of services and brands now let us look at an example for uh, of service tiering and we are talking about avis car rental it is a car rental company that focus uh, consum uh, consumers customers and business customers so service tiering for consum consumers customer that is based on different car classes so the car classes can vary from subcompact to compact intermediate standard full size speciality signature premium luxury standard elite suv intermediate suv full size suv premium suv convertible minivan and passenger vans and the services with or with, without drivers so now you see that they are tiering services based on the car car class and the services that is with or without a driver so you can have so many options in addition to that uh, each option can have can come with a with a driver or without a driver service sharing for business customers business customers have four programs that cater to different types of business customers to choose from one is they have a program for small and mid sized uh, business another is for entertainment and production meetings and group services and government and military now after we have talked about the various the four types of branding strategy now uh, strategies now let us look at how to go about building brand equity brand equity is the value premium that comes with a brand brand equity is the value premium that comes with a brand what customers are willing to pay for the service beyond what they are willing to pay for a similar service that has no brand so that is what brand equity is brand equity is the value premium that a brand commands and what is this value premium it is what the customer are willing to pay for a services what extra is the customer willing to pay for your service as compared to a service that comes without a brand so brand equity is value premium the extra value that comes with a brand and this extra value is reflected in whether how much the customer is willing to pay more for your service as compared to a no brand service and this the components of brand equity includes the company's presented brand that is mainly through advertising service facilities and personnel and external brand communication external brand communication includes that it comes from word of mouth and publicity these are outside of the firm's control another component of brand uh, brand equity is customer experience with the company what the customer has gone through when they patronize the company their brand awareness the ability to recognize and recall a brand when provided with a cue so that is aided recall so we call it as aided recall so there can be unaided recall also so brand awareness is when the customer is able to recall a brand when they are provided with a cue brand meaning what comes to the customer mind when the brand is mentioned and the brand equity that is the degree of marketing advantage that a brand has over its competitors so these are the components of brand equity first is the company's presented brand external so this is what company has to say about their brand external brand communication that uh, all that communication on which country on which company does not have any control then how customers have experienced the brand the company brand awareness whether customers are are uh, aware of the brand when they are given a cue the meaning of the brand what is what comes to their mind when uh, when the brand is mentioned and the brand equity that is uh, the more amount of money they are ready to pay for a particular brand 
So, this is a service branding model. So, this is brand awareness and brand meaning which leads to brand equity. So, all this they leads to brand equity, we are talking about brand awareness and brand meaning. So, this is brand awareness, brand meaning. Brand awareness is with, uh, with uh, uh, aided recall and meaning is what comes to the mind of the customers when the name of the brand is mentioned and this leads to this brand equity. Now, also keep in mind that these arrows they show a weaker relationship, the, these solid arrows they show a strong relationship while the dotted ones they show the weak relationship. So, there is a strong relationship between companies presented brand, what the company has to say about their own brand, what they communicate with the customers and that lead to brand awareness. So, that is a strong relationship. Again, the customer experience with the company, all, uh, company has a strong relationship with brand meaning. That is brand meaning is comes from the customer experience with the company. And this brand meaning has a strong relationship with brand equity. So, brand awareness may not lead to brand equity, has a weak relationship with brand equity while brand meaning has a strong relationship with brand equity. Now, you see that the company's presented brand has a weak relationship with brand meaning and external communication, external brand communication, communication from uh, other sources, word of mouth etcetera, it has weak relationship with both the variables, the brand awareness and the brand meaning. So, what is important for us is that is the customer experience with the company, what has been the customer experience with the company and that leads to, that has a strong relationship with brand meaning which in turn leads to strong relationship with brand equity. But it is not that we can uh, we can ignore the uh, the weak relationships so maybe this way we may get 70% of the brand equity but we will also have to keep all these things in mind so as to get that extra 30% brand equity so a strong relationship is fine but we also have to keep in mind and and look at the weak relationships so, it is not only about the customer experience with the company, but also how the company present their brand by way of advertising and also the external brand communication that, uh, that is word of mouth etcetera, etcetera. And then we should be worried about both the things, the brand awareness and the brand meaning. Because both of them in different proportions, both of, both of them they contribute to brand equity. So, we just cannot ignore brand awareness and focus all our energies on brand meaning. More of the energies are to be focused on brand meaning, but then we cannot ignore brand awareness. So, this is the, uh, the service branding model that uh, is important for building uh, brand equity. So, companies marketing and external communications help to build brand awareness both of them they are they help to build brand awareness however it is the customer's actual experience with the brand or the moment of truth so that we have talked about earlier which are more powerful in building customer equity so this this actual customer experience with the with the brand which is called as moment of truth is is more powerful in building a brand the firms need to focus on customers deliver great experience and create an emotional connection with their customers. How to go about delivering branded service experience? The first important thing that needs to be done is to align the service product and brand, the product and the brand both with the delivery process, the service scape and people with the brand proposition. So, you have to link the service product and brand with its delivery process, service scape and people with the brand proposition. Having the, the right kind of processes in place, creation of emotional experience that can be done effectively through the service scape. So, as we have seen that this great experience is to create an emotional connection with the customer. So, this creation of em emotional experience has to be done effectively through service scape that is the tangible and the intangible elements of the of the service factory or the or the place where the service is delivered building of interpersonal relationships 
where trust is established between the consumers and the firm employee. So that is uh, that is also important in services that you build inter interpersonal relationships because that developed trust that establishes trust between the companies and the firm's employee. Investing in employees for they will be the ones who can deliver the brand experience that creates customer loyalty. So now we have we have more uh, very important for us uh, is the employees who are delivering the services because they will deliver this experience. They are responsible for delivering or living the brand experience and that creates the customer loyalty. Now let us look at the, the new services development. So there is a hierarchy of new service categories starting from the first style change. It represents the simplest form of innovation typically involving no change in either processes or performances. So that is the simplest form of innovation and we are not changing uh, either process or performance is example in of uh, style change include redesigning retail branches. So we are just redesigning the restaurant, redesigning the classroom, we redesign the websites and new uniform of the service employees. So this is the, the first and the, uh, and the simplest form of innovation. Another is another type of service innovation is the service improvements involve small changes in the performance of current products including improvement to either the core product or the existing supplementary services. For example, Lightmer Hotel in Stockholm has a series of buttons where passengers can choose their music from, a choice of garage, funk, funk and rhythm and blues. It is just a simple improvement that can add to a customer's experience as it is unique and surprising. So we are just uh, improving the service. This improvement can either be in the core product or the various uh, supplementary services that uh, we have seen in module 9. The third is supplementary service innovation, taking the form of adding new facilitating or enhancing service elements to an existing core service or significantly improving an existing supplementary services. So we are talking of supplementary services innovation. Now the, we are not, uh, we are not uh, touching the core service, we are just uh, doing innovation on the supplementary services. Low tech innovations for an existing service can be as simple as adding parking to a retail site or agreeing to accept payment via a smartphone for, uh, for the payment purpose. The next type of new service is process line extension. Uh, it offers more convenience and a different experience for existing customers or attracting new customers who find the traditional approach unappealing. So for that we, we, uh, we, uh, we offer more convenience. Often that involves adding a low contact distribution channel to an existing high contact one such as having self service to complement delivery by service employees or creating online or app based service delivery. Next is the product line extension. So earlier we have seen the process line extension, now we are talking of product line extension. So they are additions to the company's current product lines. For example, a restaurant may extend the product line to offer dog lovers a menu as well. So the people come in with their dogs and, they, and this uh, uh, restaurant also has a, a menu for dogs. So both the owner and their dogs are able to dine in the same restaurants. Another type is major process innovation, consists of using new processes to deliver existing core product in new ways with additional benefits. For example, Online courses are transforming higher education by using cutting edge technology, the internet and the smart devices. Major service innovations include new core products for markets that have not been previously defined. So now this major new services are for uh, new core products for markets that were not defined previously. For example, Amazon diversified into providing on demand computing power and become a leader in cloud computing services, although they started from selling books. Now, how to go about achieving success in new service development? First is services, much like the consumer goods, are not immune to high failure rate. For example, in banking, many banks have tried to sell insurance product in the hope of increasing the number of profitable relationship with existing customers. But many of these product extensions have failed. The reasons for the failure may include not meeting a customer need, inability to cover cost from revenues and poor execution. As per a study in the restaurant business, a failure rate of about 26% during the first year 
rising to close to 60 percent within the next three years. So, uh, the, the failure rate, rate has increased. The three factors that contribute most to the success, the first is market synergy. So, the new products fit well with the existing image of the firm, its expertise and resources. So, one thing that is important, the first thing, the first and the foremost, what is important for achieving success in service development is market synergy, that is the new products fit with the existing image of the company. It is better than competing products in terms of meeting customers' needs. As the firm has a good understanding of its customer purchase behavior and receives strong support during and after the launch from the firm and its branches. The next important uh, factor for achieving success in new service development is organizational factors. There are a strong interfunctional cooperations and coordination that is required. Development personal, personnel need to be fully aware of why they are involved and the importance of new product to the company. And before the launch, staff must understand the new product and its underlying processes as well as details about direct competitors. So, these are the three important things that are included, included in organizational factors. So, there should be a strong interfunctional cooperation and coordination and you see what is the importance of the personnel or the people who are delivering the service. They should be fully aware of why they are involved in this process and their role in whole of this process. What is why this, this new, uh, what is this new service about and uh, why it is important for, uh, for the company and who are the direct competitors uh, with whom the, uh, their, uh, their brand competes with. And the third is market research factors. Detailed and scientifically defined market research detailed and scientific scientific detailed and scientifically designed market research studies are conducted early in the development process with a clear idea of the type of information to be obtained a good definition of the product concept is developed before undertaking field surveys to conclude this module we have talked about different branding service strategies including the branded house the house of brands endorsed brands and sub brands then we have talked about the concept of service steering along with examples. The next thing that we have talked about in this module is brand building and its components. Service branding model was also uh, talked about in detail. And finally, hierarchy of new service development and the factors required in achieving success in it were discussed. So, we have talked about the various, uh, uh, various types of new service development and what are the important factors that will lead to any kind of new service development process to succeed. These are again the three books from which this module was prepared. Thank you.